All right, it's 11 o'clock, so let's get started. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Carrie Phillips, and I'll be coordinating today's webinar. I'm here with Jackie Carville. Jackie's going to go over how to use DNA Star for analyzing protein structure, structure prediction models. You may have noticed your phone has been muted. However, we do encourage you to ask questions. So to do so, type it into the chat dialog and send to host. I will then direct these questions to Jackie to be answered for the whole group. At the end of the webinar, Jackie is going to talk a little bit about a special offer that we have going. And so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Jackie. If you have any if you need any assistance throughout the webinar, you can send a chat message to me using the chat box. And with that, over to you, Jackie. Thanks a lot, Carrie. Uh, thanks you, everyone, for logging in and joining us today. To give you a little bit of an outline on what we'll go over in today's presentation, I'll first be discussing some background on DNA Star as a company, our Laser Gene Structural Biology Suite, which is our software package containing the applications you'll be seeing today, and some background information on our NovaFold application for protein structure prediction. Then I'll be jumping right into the software, showing you how to set up and run these structure predictions, and analyze your resulting prediction models. And finally, we'll also look at some protein workflows within Protein 3D, including working with surfaces, epitope prediction, and structure alignment. As a little bit about us, we are a global software company headquartered in Madison, Wisconsin. Our sales team, developers, and support network are all here, so if you have any questions, we have the full support staff to answer you, and then use your feedback to make our software even better for upcoming releases. This year, we're celebrating our 30th anniversary. We've come a long way in those 30 years, beginning in the E. coli lab of Dr. Fred Blattner at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where we initially focused on DNA sequence analysis. As this field evolved, so did we, and we transitioned into providing next-gen sequencing tools, and then more recently to offering complementary structural biology tools, as well as software offerings on the cloud. Now, this long history has made DNA Star the leader in citations in peer-reviewed journals. For the past 30 years, more researchers have cited DNA Star software in peer-reviewed scientific journals than any other sequence analysis software. And to serve all these customers, DNA Star has a support staff that works with customers all over the globe. We provide webinars like this one, as well as one-on-one -on -one training webinars. We also have extensive documentation on our website, including online help and tutorials. And we also have a video library, including over 200 videos on a variety of different topics. And of course, you can always contact our responsive support staff directly uh, through phone, email, or chat. So DNA Star offers several different software suites that package our applications in useful configurations for your work. Our Evolution Suite, which we can see up on the top left part of the screen here, uh, was designed with evolutionary biologists in mind and features tools for performing multiple and pairwise sequence alignments. This suite also allows you to assemble contigs of Sanger sequences and identify genes, along with capabilities such as virtual cloning and primer design. Our genomic suite, as we can see up here in the top right, uh, provides all the software necessary for next-gen sequence assembly and analysis. We support all major next-gen sequencing technologies, as well as a variety of different project types, including de novo or reference-guided assemblies, targeted resequencing, gene panel assembly and analysis, uh, validation controls, metagenome and population assemblies, large-scale multi-sample SNP analysis, uh, as well as RNA-seq, chip-seq, and microRNA alignment. Additionally, we also support workflows such as automated genome closure, uh, clinical research support, and cancer genomic analysis as well within this particular suite. Uh, and finally, our structural biology suite, as we can see here on the bottom, provides tools for structural biologists to analyze protein sequences, visualize macromolecular structure, predict epitopes, and align structures. 
In addition, the Structural Biology Suite offers access to NovaFold, which is our protein structure prediction program. And this is the particular suite that we'll be discussing for the rest of the presentation today. So our Laser Gene Structural Biology Suite includes our applications Protein, Protein 3D, and several other sequence editing and, and analysis tools, as well as access to this NovaFold application. We also support a variety of workflows within this particular suite, as I mentioned, and you can see those listed here. To have some history about these applications, uh, DNA Star began venturing into protein analysis software way back in 1998 with the introduction of Protein. Now, Protein was created to mine information from protein sequences, helping to predict and display patterns, secondary structural characteristics, and physiochemical properties of protein sequences. In 2011, our Protein 3D application was introduced. Protein 3D is our application for exploring macromolecular structure, motion, and function. Now within this Protein 3D app, you can use graphical views to visualize your protein structures, employ various prediction methods to evaluate secondary structure characteristics, and easily customize your structure rendering. And then in 2013, we introduced NovaFold, our protein structure prediction program. NovaFold is integrated with Protein 3D and features the rich graphical interface of Protein 3D with the high-performance computing of the Amazon Cloud. Now with the introduction of NovaFold, we've shifted our historical licensing model. Now traditionally, all of the DNA Star software was purchased as a perpetual license. However, with the introduction of some of our cloud-based applications, like NovaFold, we now offer some more flexible licensing options which are customizable to your particular project. So now you have the option to set up annual licenses or licenses by month, week, or individual NovaFold structure prediction. So our sales representatives are happy to talk you through your specific research project and then work with you to set up a custom license for your needs. NovaFold was then born out of an ongoing collaboration with Dr. Zhang of the University of Michigan. NovaFold builds off, to, off of Dr. Zhang's lab's iTaser algorithms to build accurate, full 3D atomic models of proteins with previously unknown structures. So why did we choose to build our NovaFold application off of this iTaser algorithm? And this question really stems from the Critical Assessment of Structure Prediction, or CASP competition. Now this competition is a biennial competition uh, held worldwide where hundreds of teams test their prediction tools against newly solved structures. There's a blind study of over 100 structure targets, and prediction results are assessed by an independent panel. The iTaser algorithm has won this competition for the past eight years. So why is the question of structure prediction so important? And we can answer this by just looking at the numbers for some of the known sequence entries in GenBank, and then compare them to the number of known protein structures in PDB. And we can clearly see a huge discrepancy between these two figures. Now these protein structure prediction programs are so important because they allow us to work with proteins that cannot be or have not yet been crystallized. So there are three major structure prediction methods used in this field. Homology modeling, threading or fold recognition, and ab initio folding. Homology modeling is the easiest case of all three methods, and this uses a solved homologous structure for calculations. This method is usually successful for about a third of all proteins. The threading method is used for harder problems and requires a similar structural fold to the predicted protein. Now this method is usually successful for about 50% of all proteins. And finally, ab initio folding is for some of the most difficult prediction cases that require intensive calculations on the biophysical principles of the protein. Because of this, ab initio folding works best for small proteins that are about 100 residues in length. Now if we look at these two images here, uh, this demonstrates the accuracy of the ab initio method. The image on the left was created using the ab initio folding structure prediction method in the iTaser algorithm during one of the CASP competitions, while the image on the right was created using traditional X-ray crystallography. And in looking at these, we can really see how close these two structures are. 
So NovaFold uses a combination of both the threading and the ab initio methods. The NovaFold method finds structure fragments from multiple templates, builds fragments not matching the template, and then further refines the final model. Because of the large computational power that this particular method necessitates, NovaFold does use the Amazon Cloud. Now first, your query sequence is submitted on your desktop computer within Protean 3D. With your Amazon Web Services credentials, the sequence is then sent to a cluster of computers on the Amazon Cloud, where the actual structure prediction computations take place. When complete, the predicted models will be returned to the desktop computer and Protean 3D for your analysis. So why do we use the cloud with our NovaFold app? Well, the computational power that is necessary to run one of these structure predictions is just too great for any normal desktop computer to handle. What's happening is that millions of small computations are taking place in order to build the final model. And by using the cloud to facilitate these computations, many can be done at once and your predictions can be returned that much quicker. What's nice about this approach is that you still get the user experience of a desktop environment with NovaFold housed within the Protean 3D application, uh, while the computational power then remains in the cloud environment. So after all this, how does NovaFold compare to iTaser? Now right now, the modeling results you get from the two approaches are very similar. However, with NovaFold, you do get our user-friendly interface, detailed statistical reports on each return model, dedicated personal computer resources, so you don't have to wait to submit your prediction into a pipeline, the ability to run multiple predictions at once, integration with downstream analysis methods in Protean 3D to work with your models, and our strong support staff to answer any questions you have along the way, whether it's setting up your structure predictions or analyzing your final results. We're continuing to improve this code with the collaboration of Dr. Zhang and his University of Michigan team. Now, over time, DNA Star looks to improve the speed and accuracy of the program even further, as well as diverge to provide you with some additional structure prediction analysis options. We have recently received some grant awards to further this work, so we are in active development on these structural biology products. So now I'm going to go ahead and jump right into our software. Um, hey. Unless there's any questions first. Sure. Thanks, Jackie. Um, we did have one question. Um, you discussed flexible licensing options. Mm -hmm. Where can I get the pricing information for my specific project? Sure. So uh, pricing information on NovaFold is really quite variable uh, just because, as I said, you know, you do have um, all of those options available to you. And what might be a good uh, option for one person uh, might not fit the best for somebody else's project. So what I'm going to show you to do, here's our DNA Star website here. And if you are interested in NovaFold, you can go ahead to our request quote form. Uh, make sure that you indicate that you're interested in our protein structure prediction, and we will have someone get back to you right away with pricing information on your particular NovaFold licenses. All right, thank you. That's all we had right now. Sure. All right. Well, the first application I'm going to go ahead and open up here today uh, is our DNA Star Navigator. Now, the Navigator is our guide to all of the DNA Star applications. And in looking at the Navigator, you can quickly and easily view a summary of all the DNA Star applications available to you. So if I go ahead and hover over any of these icons, I can see an in-depth description of that particular application and access some additional resources for that app, such as videos, uh, tutorials, or demo data here as well. Uh, the Navigator is also fully integrated with our searchable online help system uh, so that you can quickly and easily search terms across all of our applications to answer any of your questions. Uh, but what I'm going to do from here is open up our Protean 3D application, and I'll quickly walk you through uh, some of the different features of the Protean 3D interface. And after we've familiarized ourselves with that, uh, then we'll go ahead and dive into uh, NovaFold here. So this is our Protean 3D interface. Uh, getting started in Protean 3D is very easy. easy. Uh, you can quickly and easily download any structure um, from PDB as well as open any of the files that you have as well. 
so I've gone ahead and opened up this 7TIM structure here just for demonstration purposes. What we're looking at right here is the structure view where we can visualize our particular structure of interest. And if we go ahead and look at the top of the view here, I can see that we have all these nice tools and different options uh, to look at our structure within the structure view. So I can zoom in and out uh, pretty easily as well as uh, rotate our structure around different axes. So really nice and easy to customize how you're looking at your particular model. Uh, additionally, we can also quickly and easily change the style of how our protein is displayed down here in the style panel at the right of our screen. Also, we can look and we have a lot of nice rendering options for this particular uh, protein, as well as the ability to look at side chains. Um, and outside of the rendering, we even have different coloring options, as well as we can even adjust the lighting on our structures as well. And so this is really nice because uh, we additionally have some great um, image export capabilities as well if you'd like to use whatever you have set up in your structure views for your uh, publications. Now just below the structure view here, we can see that we have a sequence view as well. And here we can make selections at various points of the sequence, which will correspondingly be highlighted within the structure view. So if I select any of these green helical elements here, we can see that region highlighted. Uh, additionally, if I select any of these red tube icons, uh, then all of the residues involved in a binding site will be selected along with the binding site itself. So again, some really nice integration between these, these views that are uh, available here. So one other panel I want to point out uh, up at the top right here is our Explorer panel. And if you look at this Explorer panel, we can see that we have the option to select some of the different structural elements of this particular protein. So I've expanded out our Molecules tab here within the Explorer panel, and I can look at all the different subunits in my protein. I can check or uncheck some of these subunits, which um, show or hide them from view. Uh, and again, this complete integration between all the views and panel selections is one of the really great things about the Protein 3D interface. One of the other really important panels that I'd like to point out here is our Details panel. And within this panel is detailed information about your particular structure or sequence. So right now in the Details panel, it's looking at the entire structure here, but I can also select uh, different residues and show information on that as well. Um, or different binding sites and view information. So it's really uh, giving you the nice detailed information about whatever you have selected in your different views in this details panel. And then the final view I'd like to point out here is our analysis view. Open that up here. And this view allows you to apply a variety of prediction methods to your particular protein sequence. So if I look at the methods panel up at the top right of the screen, these are all of the methods that are available to us to be looked at in the analysis view here. And with any of these particular methods, we can go ahead and choose to expand them out uh, to view some more detailed information on that particular method, uh, as well as compare results across different methods here in this analysis view. Now with all these different views and panels we've discussed, Protein 3D does have uh, docking and rearrangement capabilities. So I can take any of these views, um, choose to detach or undock and move them around uh, to really customize this Protein 3D interface for my particular project. Whatever makes it easiest for you to work. So after going through that, now I'm going to go ahead and show you how NovaFold then fits within this Protein 3D interface. So there's a few different ways to go ahead and access NovaFold uh, within the file menu here. Um, so NovaFold is really hidden in a lot of different places throughout our windows. And when I open up NovaFold, it opens up this nice window in the bottom of the screen here. Uh, this panel, too, just want to point out, has some of the same docking capabilities as the other panels. So I could undock this and move this anywhere I would like without the window. Um, but right now, what we're looking at right here is the preview mode for NovaFold. 
and preview mode is enabled for users that are not currently logged into their DNA Star accounts via the NovaFold panel. So this mode will show some pre-completed structure predictions, uh, which allow you to view the results and give you an idea of what you will see as output from running your own predictions. So if you're downloading a free trial, uh, this is a really nice way to get to play around with some of the uh, reporting elements of NovaFold without running your own predictions yourself. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and log into my uh, DNA Star account. So I can look at the predictions I've already run for today. And once I've successfully logged in, I can see this nice message from NovaFold up in the top right part of the screen telling me how many predictions I have remaining on my license. Now it looks like here I have 14 predictions left on this particular license. And again, you do have those flexible licensing options where you can purchase based on how many predictions you need or purchase unlimited uses for a set period of time. Uh, so if I were a term license user, I would then see, uh, for example, the expiration date of my license in this same space up here. So it gives you a really nice way to keep track of what's going on with your license as you're working. So within the NovaFold interface, I'll go ahead and look at the toolbar right here. And here we can see all of the basic icons needed to manage our predictions. So from left to right, I have the option to create a prediction. And this is where I would select and submit my sequence files. Uh, using this will then create an unsubmitted prediction in your prediction list. Uh, we then have the option to run our prediction, which officially starts running this. Uh, we can stop the prediction. Uh, this will end the use of your cloud resources that you started by running. Uh, and we can delete our prediction, which uh, terminates your prediction and deletes any of your results data. So any of the actions of these commands in the toolbars will be reflected down here in our prediction list. And this prediction table summarizes all of the predictions that are associated with my NovaFold account. I can quickly and easily sort this prediction list by any of the headers here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and actually set up a prediction for us today. Uh, so you can see how that process works. And so I'll go ahead and select Create Prediction. And I'll just use this FASTA file that I have and open that up. Uh, and then we can see that uh, this amino acid sequence then appeared as a submission in my prediction list. And so the yellow icon over here to the left will indicate this as an unsubmitted prediction. So I'm going ahead and select this file here and then I'll select Run from the toolbar. And we can see that we've then opened up our Run Predictions window here. So here, NovaFold is checking to ensure that our protein sequence fits within our 400 residue limit. So while we're currently limiting our predictions to sequences that are 400 residues or less, we will be expanding soon as we optimize our algorithm for larger structures. So right now, NovaFold doesn't offer the exact time that the cloud will take to process each prediction. However, we can estimate how long your prediction will take to run based on the number of residues in your sequence. So if I select the estimated cloud time link here, this will bring us right to our website. And we can take a look at the NovaFold benchmarks page that it's pulled up. And so for small proteins, which are about 100 residues or less, we can see that this just takes a matter of hours to run and complete this prediction. Uh, for larger proteins, as we get up on the scale here, uh, we can see that some of these may take a day or two to return. Um, but if we're looking at this graph where NovaFold recreated the CASP-10 competition, uh, we can really get an idea for some of these NovaFold run times so you can have an estimation uh, for your particular project. So I'll go ahead and close this window and jump right back into Protein 3D here. Uh, one other important aspect of this particular dialog window here is the Advanced Options panel. So I'll go ahead and open that up. And this gives us some nice options uh, to configure some of our parameters for this particular prediction. One important item in this panel is the ability to predict ligand binding sites and protein function. Uh, if you don't need this information for your particular project or prediction, you can feel free to uncheck that box. That's going to cut down on your prediction time a little bit and return that final prediction models to you a little faster. Um, 
but I want to know that information, so I'll, I'll keep that checked here. Um, and for the rest of this information, it's not usually necessary to change any of these parameters from their default settings, but just want to point out that they are available uh, for you if you wish to adjust these in any way. So I'm going to go ahead and click Run here. And if I give this a couple seconds, we can see our prediction will start to run. Um, there it goes. Um, and so then on the left of this prediction, you'll see a little green triangle icon. So this here indicates that our prediction is running, and you have started to use your Amazon Cloud resources here. So while my predictions are running here, I have the option to safely close the NovaFold panel or Protein 3D, and I won't impact my prediction at all, so I don't need to leave this program up on my desktop while our predictions are running. Um, however, I will have to log back into Protein 3D to check if my prediction is complete and to get updated information on that particular prediction. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop this prediction here, so if I select it, I can hit Stop. Um, just since I've completed some predictions for us to use already today. And that'll wrap that up here. Um, so when your prediction is complete, you can see it uh, within this prediction window, as I can see with some of our other predictions here. Uh, having a slight interaction with WebEx here. So if you give me one second. Uh, there we go. Pull up our Protein 3D application again. So yep, we, I can see that I, I, particular, I stopped this particular prediction. So we'll see the notification that it has stopped. And we'll see that that prediction uh, was returned back to our remaining licenses uh, update there. Um, so as I said, when our prediction are, is complete, we can select it from this list here. Um, and we can view the results in our new NovaFold report. Uh, so if I want to look at this prediction, I've already opened up the report here. I'm going to go ahead and close out the NovaFold panel so we can take a better look at this report. So I can see at the top of the report, I can see the name of uh, the sequence I submitted, as well as the number of residues uh, and the sequence I submitted for that particular prediction. Below that, I am looking at uh, the template section of this report. And this is the list of templates used to build our prediction model. Now these templates are protein fragments from existing PDB structures, and the top 10 templates are ranked here. So we can click on any of these templates here uh, and pull up their PDB entry, so we can take a look at, at what was used. So nice integration with that. Um, we can also examine the Z-score here, which is a normalized score describing the similarity between the query sequence and the template. And with this particular score, higher is better, uh, and we want to look for numbers greater than 1 to be significant. We can also see the threading algorithm that was used to call any of these templates, and look at the coverage, uh, which ranges from 0 to 1 and describes the fraction that the templates overlap the query sequence. Finally, we can go ahead and look at the percent ID here, which is the percentage of the query that is an exact match to the template. The mini-map at the right of this view lets us examine the alignment of the query sequence to each template. We can check any of these templates uh, on the left here and choose to open them up in a new window aligned to any of our models so we can get a, a look at how these templates overlapped with our predicted model. So as I scroll down through this report, I can also look at the model overview window here. Uh, and this displays metrics for all of our prediction models at once. So the TM score, or template modeling score, ranges from 0 to 1, with 1 being the best. The RMSD, or root mean squared deviation, ranges from 0 to about 30. And with this particular score, the lower is better for RMSD. Uh, then our C score, or confidence score, uh, we also want to be as close to 1 as possible. And finally, we see our cluster size and density score columns here. So the cluster size is the number of similar structures that are identified in the simulation process. A larger cluster size is indicative of a lower energy confirmation. 
so the lowest energy conformations are associated with biologically relevant structures. So the higher the number, the better with regards to determining ranking in terms of the cluster size. The density score will then look at the tightness of this cluster and the similarity of the cluster to the threading templates. Again, we also want a higher number here with this density score. We can also see that all of the models in this list are color-coded, uh, green, orange, and red for different models. So green models, uh, as we can see in 1 and 3 here, uh, have a TM score greater or equal than 0.75. And these are going to be appropriate models for drug design, drug screening, ligand docking, and molecular replacement projects. Now some of the orange models here have a TM score ranging between 0.5 and 0.75 and are appropriate models for mutagenesis design and, predictive, and predicting active sites, disease substitutions, alternative splicing patterns, and domain boundaries. And finally, our red models, uh, these will have a TM score between 0.17 and 0.5. These might be appropriate models for predicting domain boundaries. So we can look at each of these models, uh, then in its own mini structure view, with a reiteration of some of its scoring information. Uh, this model can be spun in its view to give us a nice overview of the, the model as a whole, um, as well as opened up in a new Protean 3D window as well where we can use any of the same visualization methods we looked at earlier. If I keep scrolling through this report here, continuing our way down, we can see a list of similar experimental structures. So these, this uh, particular section will be visible if you checked the predict ligand binding sites and protein function box in the advanced parameters dialog we looked at when setting up our prediction. And again, we can choose to look at the PDB entry for any of these structures here, uh, as well as open our model aligned with any of the checked structures uh, within our Protean 3D view. So I have an example of that here with a couple of the checked experimental structures aligned. So now as I uh, scroll down a little more, we can take a look at some of our predicted binding sites. Again, we've got the nice uh, mini structure view here. Uh, we can choose to check any of our ligands in this list to visualize them in that particular structure view. Uh, again, we can follow the links to PDB for any of these templates uh, and look at the numbers of the residues involved in each of the binding sites for these. Uh, like many of these other sections, um, as I said before, we can also open up this model in uh, Protein 3D. I'll zoom in a little bit here uh, and take a closer look at some of those um, ligands in their binding sites as well. Predicted enzyme function uh, can be analyzed for any model with a TM score of greater than 0.5. So during the prediction process, NovaFold will use a database of known enzymes to predict whether the query sequence has any enzymatic function. So here we can look at the EC number, uh, which identifies each enzyme, and then links directly to the Brenda database entry for that particular enzyme. And as a final component of this report, uh, we do uh, have the ability to also look at predicted protein function. So similar to the predicted enzyme function, this particular section is only accessible for models with a TM score of greater than 0.5. So this section shows possible protein functions of the query sequence using terms from the gene ontology database. We can look at the molecular function, biological process, and cellular component classifications, as well as a confidence score associated with each of our GO terms. So this wraps up the, dis uh, the discussion of the NovaFold report as a whole. Uh, we basically went through some of these advanced options for one of the models, but uh, as I can see at the bottom of the screen, we do have tabs open uh, where we can look at that for uh, all of our other models uh, that our project returned as well. So basically, you'll be going through and, and analyzing some of your different models uh, to see which ones might be the best to uh, explore further for your particular project. Um, so I'll, I'll break if there's any questions on the NovaFold report at all here. Hi, thanks, Jackie. 
Um, so how many structures can you align at once? So there really isn't a uh, strong limit. Uh, we don't have anything hard-coded in the system uh, as for numbers of structures that you can align. Uh, I guess what you will be limited by is just your ability to uh, adequately visualize uh, some of these areas. Um, so what you can do in terms of that is some of the rendering options as well. So I might want to uh, change the rendering of a particular section that I'm interested in. Um, just to maybe make things a little easier for me to like look at that particular section. Um, but yeah, no, we don't have any numerical limitations. It'll just be dependent on your particular hardware and just your ability to cleanly visualize your alignments uh, within the structure view. Great. So in moving on, uh, I'm going to transition back now to our Protein 3D interface, and I'll go over just a few of our downstream analysis methods that we have within Protein 3D. Now these next workflows are applicable to all of the different protein projects, uh, not just our structure prediction models, but you can definitely use any of the structure prediction models you generate through NovaFold uh, as applied to any of these workflows. So again, by housing NovaFold within Protein 3D, you do have the opportunity to take advantage of Protein 3D's rich graphical views and customization options here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up this 7 TIM structure again here. Um, and as one of our first workflows I'll go through, uh, one of the most recently improved prediction methods up here in our panel is this B cell epitope prediction method here. So I'm going to quickly walk you through how to use this epitope prediction method to, and uh, also on how to create some surfaces. So what we're eventually going to do here is use this prediction method uh, and view the solvent accessible surface of the likely epitope in relation to the rest of the protein. So going ahead and looking at the structure view here, first I'm going to go ahead and open up our sequences panel, or our surfaces panel, sorry, in our uh, Explorer menu. Let's see, I can open up that section here. And what I'm going to want to do now in the surfaces panel is I'll want to add a um, high quality solvent accessible surface for that particular structure. Delete this other one I made. Here we go. Now I've got this high quality solvent accessible uh, surface over our entire structure here. And I'm going to want to color this surface that I just created. And again, I can do that uh, within our style panel here that I showed you earlier. So I'm going to color that this nice green color and click OK. You can see that our surface we just created, um, we can just color any, any selection we'd like. So now what I'm going to do is I want to shift over to our analysis view here. I'll deselect everything. Um, and from the methods panel, I'll want to add our B cell epitope prediction method uh, into this analysis view. That'll be added down here at the bottom of the view here. And I'll want to go ahead and expand this, this method out here. And what I'm looking at here um, is some of these light pink regions. These are some antigenic regions here. We can also see the confidence scores for any of these antigenic regions. And some of the dark pink regions are these highly antigenic regions. Uh, and we can also, again, view the confidence score for these highly antigenic regions as well. Uh, so in analyzing the confidence scores for some of these particular regions, we can really get a good sense of some of the probability that any of these are a B cell epitope. So I can go ahead and highlight a region of interest. Let's say I'm interested in this region right here. Uh, again, we can see that I've highlighted it here in this analysis view. It also highlights it in the sequence view, and it will be highlighted in the structure view as well. So again, showing that nice integration. Um, so after I've selected that highly antigenic region that I'm interested in, I'm going to go back over to the Explorer panel, um, and the Style panel, I'm sorry, and choose the color. Select that yellow. 
And if I go back to uh, the structure view here, I can then visualize that region and uh, see that I've colored that surface for that highly antigenic region so we can get a good idea of uh, our potential B cell epitope site there. So that wraps up uh, both learning how to use surfaces in Protein 3D as well as using some of our uh, methods here. So again, I can go through that same workflow for any of these methods to really look at um, some different sites of interest on our protein. Um, and with that, one of the other workflows that's helpful to know in Protein 3D is how to go ahead and open and align multiple structures within a single Protein 3D, doc Protein 3D document. And this is going to allow you to discover similarities and differences between two structures. So I've already downloaded two structures of interest um, from PDB. I'm going to ahead and open them as a group. So I'll select that from the file menu. I'll go ahead and add in my files. I'm interested in this one BFD as well as the one PVD file here. So I've opened both of these up here. I'll want to make sure that the center on screen to align similar structures is selected in my structure view options. And I'll go ahead and click OK. And this will spin up a new uh, Protein 3D structure document for us. So I've added my two files. Now I can see both of my structures are open in, a, in this single document here. So the first thing I'm going to want to do to make this a little easier to look at uh, is go to our style panel. Again, in the coloring tab, I'm going to select that I want to color by chain from the color style dropdown. And now I can see that our one BFD structure consists of a single green chain, while our one PVD structure consists of both a yellow and a blue chain. So right now, um, as we can see, all of these chains are unaligned, so they just overlap with each other randomly on the screen. And to align these chains, we're going to want to go to the Explorer menu here. I'm going to expand down our Molecules tab a little bit so we can um, take a better look at that. Uh, and again, we can see all these um, subunits um, uh, in the Explorer menu under the Molecules tab. And so what I'm going to want to do is I'll want to select the A chain from the one BFD as well as the B chain from one PVD. And I've just control clicked both of those to select both of them. And I'm now going to want to align these selected chains. So I'll do that by selecting structure, align structures, and then I'll do a rigid body alignment for the selected regions. This will just take a couple seconds here as these uh, structure alignment is computed. Again, feel free to chat in any questions to carry. Uh, and yep, there we go. We can see that we've uh, aligned both of these structures and that the alignment is complete. Uh, so now what we're going to want to do is I can go ahead and expand up our details panel. And so what I can look at here is uh, all sorts of information about this particular alignment uh, here within the details panel here. So I'm going to deselect off of those particular um, chains so I can look at the alignment as a whole. There we go. Let me just give it one second here. And so now when I look at the details panel, uh, I can see that we can analyze this RMSD value uh, for these two aligned structures here. Um, so as we discussed with our NovaFold structure predictions, the closer our RMSD value is to zero, the better. Uh, so an RMSD value of less than 0.5 uh, for this particular case would indicate a near identical structural similarity. 0.5 to 0.2 would indicate still a very high degree of similarity, and an RMSD of 2 to 5 would indicate a lower uh, but still noticeable degree of similarity. And from previous research uh, on these two particular structures, uh, we already know that these two sequences have a 19% sequence similarity. 
So this corresponds really, really well with our RMSD value of 3.079 that we found with our alignment here.